University College of Ibadan was established as a college of the University of London. The University College at that time took off with three foundation faculties, the Faculty of Art, the Faculty of Science, and the Faculty of Medicine. At that time, the faculty was very small. The, one could almost say that the number of staff faculty could be counted almost on the fingers of one hand. Uh, Professor Beatrice Jolly, Professor of Surgery, in those days was the first dean. But soon after there was a succession of deans. And students transferred from higher college in Yaba to here to form the Nidus of the University College. And the first sets of students that did their pre medical and then preclinical sciences uh, came on board around 1949-50 and then many of these read the anatomy and physiology and pharmacology uh, but unfortunately there was no UCH at the time and this meant a number of us had, in fact, to complete a clinical training in hospitals abroad. I, for one, went to the Royal London Hospital. It was called the London Hospital then in Whitechapel. But many of my contemporaries went to Bath or Guy's or St. Thomas's or Oxford, in various medical schools in Britain. We grew from that faculty of medicine to become a college of medicine in 1980. It was actually the result of a long-standing effort to create an autonomous college of medicine that is self-accounting, that is also recognized by law. And by law, we are permitted, permitted to do certain things. We are allowed to promote to the level of senior lecturer. We can fire up to the level of senior lecturer. And we are also self-accounting. As an institution. In the early stages of its existence, the erstwhile Faculty of Medicine encountered the fundamental problem of maintaining high standards and securing worldwide recognition. Uh, the college did not just come on a platter of gold, obviously. Uh, there were some opposition within the university, but unfortunately not much. The majority of the university community welcomed the idea. Consequently, by special relation, medical students of the University College Ibadan took courses in medicine leading to the degree of MBBS of the University of London. In choosing a site for the University College, the Foundation Fathers resolved that there should be only one campus on which all faculties should be built. At that time, Ibadan had no hospital of high enough standard to be used as a teaching hospital. The choice of Ibadan as a university town therefore had an obvious drawback. While medical courses in chemistry, physics and biology were taught in the Faculty of Science, the departments that taught anatomy and technology were housed in the old Yaba Medical School in Lagos until 1950 when the dissection rooms and laboratories for these courses were built in Ibadan. However, in anticipation of the clinical training for preclinical students who had started their courses at that time, the University College of Ibadan had to make plans for the running of a teaching hospital. The college, therefore, became responsible for the administration of Adeoyo Hospital, which had hitherto been run by the City Council of Ibadan, and Jericho Hospital, which was controlled by the government. Of course, it was obvious from the onset that the facilities in the two hospitals were inadequate for the clinical training of medical students. The faculty therefore made alternative arrangements by sending medical students overseas until courses could start in a new teaching hospital. Meanwhile, medical students continued to go overseas for their clinical training with the cooperation of universities in Great Britain. 
95 students of the University College of Ibadan qualified by this arrangement and graduated in 1954. In fact, the Ibadan graduates of what I did, starting from my own class, we all went abroad to specialize. No, not a single member of our, the 20 that graduated, the first 24 that graduated in Ibadan from our class. No, not, not a single member did not become a specialist. You know, I was the first to be to specialize in X-ray work, radiology. Although I was actually trained by the Western region, uh, you know, to be the second to bio banjo. But Western, but uh, I was I was more academically inclined, and and uh, and the universities too needed the Bado and Lagos needed someone. And uh, there was competition between the two for me in 1967. And I chose naturally my alma mater. You know, uh. Plans and construction work were subsequently put underway for the establishment of a new 500 bed hospital some four kilometers from the University College Ibadan. On October 7, 1957, clinical teaching commenced at the new hospital, which was formally opened by Princess Royal on November 20 of the same year. We have one of the best teaching hospitals uh, in the country, which was actually purpose built, you know, for uh, a medical school. A number of other teaching hospitals, maybe they started from a general hospital and are still involved in both. This hospital was purpose built and it is still the best in this uh, country. The first 13 medical students wholly trained in this medical school qualified in 1960. Between 1960 and 1966, 246 students of the Ibadan Medical School took the MB and the BS degree of the University of London. And since 1967 to date, a further 4,572 graduates have received the degree of MBBS Ibadan. Thus, up to October 1997, the medical school produced 4,818 doctors, several of whom are the teaching staff of other medical schools in Nigeria and other Commonwealth countries. Well, I would say that the College of Medicine in is the mother college of medicine. Because in fact, if you go to any of the other colleges of medicine, you'll find that a good percentage of their teachers, their, the most senior of the academic staff, were trained in this and College of It is indeed pertinent to underscore the fact that two in every three Nigerian doctors today is a graduate of the Ibadan Medical School. One of the ways you can assess a university is the product. What comes out of that university? And we are able to say that we have very eminent people all over the world who have achieved a lot of success and positions of eminence because of the training we had in